we're super excited to invite Ashanti Branch on stage from the Ever Forward Club here in Oakland, speaking on how young men of color are surviving today. Good morning. Can we all just um, take a deep breath? So throughout this talk, I'm going to ask you to take a deep, deep breath. Um, one of my mentors told me that the incoming breath uh, energizes the body and the outgoing breath relaxes the body. And so there may be a point in time where I get to a part where I think we all could use a deep breath. Maybe I needed a deep breath, but I would like you just to do it with me. <laughs> and so um, my name is Ashanti. And... Um, or the Ever Forward Club. I wanted to read this quote to get us started. Love takes off the masks that we fear we cannot live without and know we cannot live within. So a lot of work we do in the Ever Forward Club is around taking off the mask. Our, our signature workshop is called Taking Off the Mask. We were featured in a documentary called The Mask You Live In, which is about American masculinity and how society is failing our boys. But when you think about taking off the mask, when you think about the idea of being willing to let somebody see behind the mask, I think it's really deeply rooted in some love. But can you imagine, or do you imagine, that there are people we love that we don't take the mask off in front of in the name of love? In the name of, I don't want to tell them that really about me, because I don't want to mess up the love that I got. I don't want to get in the way of how this loving relationship is going, so I, I better not let them know what's really going on. Love. And so I'm going to ask for some help today. Like, you are going to be asked to do something in a few minutes um, that may be tricky, may be easy. You may land in a lot of different ways. But in order for me to get through in the time that I have allotted, I'm going to really need your help, and I'm going to need your help to do it kind of quickly. So I may be rushing you. And you may be like, well, well, why is he making a big deal about asking us for help? Well, um, I don't know where you grew up. I don't know like, what your life situation was like. I don't know if you grew up in a place where asking for help was actually the best cool thing to do. I don't know if you, when you grew up, asking for help was just what you did on a regular basis. But what if asking for help didn't make you feel cool? What if asking for help didn't make you feel strong? What if asking for help didn't make you feel manly and you wanted to be a man? What if asking for help went against what your uncle told you at seven years old that you are the man of the house now? It's your job to take care of your mom, your sister, and your little brother at seven to be given and bestowed the responsibility of being the man of the house at seven says you should know what to do because a man knows what to do. Men don't go and get stuff from other people. Men do. Men achieve. Men conquer. That's what I was taught. You may have been growing up in a different place. You may have grew up in a different environment where what it meant to be a man was different. But I was told that you got to be tough, you got to be cool, you got to be on top of your game, you got to suck it up, you got to not complain, and you better do it yourself. That's what I was taught. And so what you're going to hear today is a, somewhat of a journey around this idea of what I was taught. It may go very much against what you were taught. I want you to be okay with that. The first thing I'm going to talk to you about is this letter that I got. Um, I was a vice principal at Oakland, Montero Middle School, and all right, some Toros in the house. Awesome. Love the Toros. And um, it was the day we were going to launch the documentary, uh, The Mask You Live In. We were doing it around the corner, and uh, I was super excited. I wasn't going to go to work today. I, I, that day, I took the day off. I had it all planned out. But they needed some help that morning at the school. So I said, well, you know, I'll go in for the morning. And then I'll leave and go get the stuff ready for the celebration. And a young man walked to my office. Uh, I had met him once or twice, just kind of talking over some things that he was going through. And he said, well, I see you're packing up to leave. I just, I'll give you this and I'll go back to class. And he handed me a note. 
And I liked, I mean, I'm, you know, as a vice principal, kids don't really give you notes usually. So I was actually pretty, I'm like, oh, let me read it. And he's like, well, I'm gonna go back to class. And no, well, hold on, let me, let me read it. And this is the note. Dear mom, Mr. Branch and family, I'm planning to kill myself today, tomorrow, the next day. I've been studying what I'm gonna do to commit suicide. At first I was gonna hang myself, but then someone told me there was a way to do it without feeling any pain. So he comes up with another method and he says, the reason I'm gonna do this is because it feels like I don't fit in this world. Now maybe, um, I don't know where you come from. I don't know where you were at 11 years old. But at 11 years old, this young man walked in my office and he said, you know what, um, I had enough. I don't know if you've ever been at that point in your life where you said, you know what, I've had enough. I, I, I don't want to deal anymore. And maybe you didn't think about killing yourself. Maybe you just thought, well, I'll just take a bunch of drugs and forget about the stuff. Maybe you thought I'll just drink a bunch of alcohol to forget about the stuff. Maybe you thought I'll just jump into relationship after relationship just to forget about the stuff. Maybe there was other things you did or that you know that people do to forget about the stuff. But this young man, his toolbox was not that full. He, he said, I found a way. Now this day um, was life changing for me. Like I wasn't even planning to be at work that day. I had things to do that day. I had a list of accomplishments and tasks that I needed to take care of because I had an event starting at 6 p.m. I didn't plan on this. And so I told him to sit down and I said, listen, um, today is gonna be a hard day, um, but I got your back. The definition I found uh, what survival is, and you may have another definition you read, the state or fact of continuing to live or exist, typically in spite of an accident or deal or difficult circumstance. The state of continuing to live. Like all of you arrived here this morning through how many ever days or years you've been on this earth and you have survived things. Anybody survived things before? When I think about this young man at 11 years old, I remember hearing a typewriter typing in my mom's room when I was about 11. And we were doing this project in school and I was like, I don't really wanna do this project, but I gotta do it, so I gotta go ask her this question. And she's always typing, so I don't wanna bother her, but I need to ask this question. So I go to her room and she's typing away, and it's a typewriter, <laughs> so it's not a computer, so you can hear it. And it's like, click. You know, anybody know what a typewriter is, people? Okay, okay, good. <laughs> Making sure. Whew, we, um, I, I was like, uh, I, got, I need to ask you a question. I know she was busy, but I need to ask you a question. And so I, she said, um, well, what's going on? I said, well, I'm doing this project at school. I need to know like, uh, some more about how my father died. And my father had died before I was born. So I'd always known that he died of heart problems. But when I was doing this project, they were like, well, what kind of heart problems? Like, blah, blah, blah. They were asking me all these extra questions. I'm like, I don't know. Ask my mom. Like, no, you ask your mom. I'm like, okay, so uh, she said, well, do, are you sure you want to know? I said, well, I think I already know. He had heart problems. She said, well, there's more to the story. At 11, there's more to the story. Anybody ever found out there was more to the story? And so I'm standing there in the doorway, confused now. Like, I'm like, oh, you're just going to tell me it was heart attack or it was the <laughs> story? Okay, let me, let me get ready for this. I don't, are you, are you sure you want to know? I said, well, yeah, tell me. She said, well, you know, he was in the 70s, right? He was out with his friends. They were smoking some weed, and somebody decided that the weed wasn't strong enough, so they put something else in it, and his heart started pounding. And instead of these friends he was with taking him to the hospital, they took him to my grandmother's house and left him on the porch. And before the ambulance got there, but, or whatever the process happened that night, in the next few hours, he died. I was like, what? You mean like 
his friends. Take a breath. You mean his friends had an option to take him to the hospital and instead they dropped him somewhere? Is that what friends do? Wow. And so imagine me growing up at that point, like thinking in one story and finding a new story and now finding that, okay, so I have to have a different relationship with friends. When I saw this image, um, I, <laughs> I saw all, all the, little, the people there, and I saw this one right here. Because after she told me that story, I went to my room, and I cried. Cried and kept crying. I, I couldn't stop. I don't know if it was an hour, two hours. Eventually, she came in and said, are you all right? And I said, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk to her. But I cried. Like I, I sat there, and I was like, wait a minute. Your friends would do that to you? The people who you would call your friends. And so I grew up with this really unhealthy trust of people. So asking somebody for help is a really big deal. Like you may have grown up thinking asking for help was no big deal. But what if you grew up believing asking for help didn't matter? Because you were a man and you had to do it by yourself. And you really couldn't trust friends, really. You could trust them a little bit, but you got to be careful because... <laughs> When I decided to become a teacher, when I left my engineering career to become a teacher, like it was a battle, it was a, it was a heart battle. I grew up in poor in Oakland, and then I go to college, I get a good job making good money, I should be happy, but I'm not happy. And this thing called teaching calls me, that's like, hey, you should be doing this. Like call from inside, no, no one called my phone. They called from inside and said, you should be doing this. And I'm like, wait, you know, see, we can't do that because teachers don't make money. I, I, I already did my poor time in life. <laughs> I'm not a, I choose not to go back. But it kept calling and it kept calling and it kept calling. And have you ever been called to do something you're like, why would I do that? You ever been called to do something that didn't make sense to other people? And maybe you answered and maybe you didn't. And so I stood there in front of these classes and after classes and realizing that I'm failing. I'm there every day. I'm there from heart. I'm there because I was called and now I'm failing. And so what I would need you to know is that when I started the Ever Forward Club, I was not trying to start a nonprofit organization. If you told me, hey, guess what? You're trying to start a nonprofit. I would have said, that doesn't sound good. I'm already a teacher. I mean, you want me to go backwards even further? Like that just, it just didn't sound like a good career move. But it called. Like the young men were saying, hey, we need a place to talk about the stuff that's going on with us in a healthy way, in a safe way, because if we don't, we're gonna, it's gonna come out in unhealthy ways. Are, are you catching survival? Like, I wanted to make a lot of money. I did the hard work to get a job that could make me a lot of money. And now I'm choosing to make a job that actually makes me almost no money. Then I'm choosing a job where I got to go hunt and search and beg people for money. Well, you may not say you have to beg. Maybe you say you have to ask nicely. Maybe you have to, like, just, uh, what, do you, how do you, what is that word? I don't know. You have to collaborate with them, connect with them, go to lunch and coffee with them. But if you believe that, asking for help makes you look weak, then it gets in the way. And so Ever Forward for 13 years has survived on a few friends and family. It has survived on just absolute hustle. And so when the documentary came out and when the Ever Forward Club started, what was happening was that I didn't know what I was doing. I knew that these young men were showing up every day, every week for lunch, after school to do homework, and they needed a safe space to just be themselves. That's what it was about. It was about come together, let's talk about whatever's going on in a healthy way. Let's let some of the steam off so that when you get new stuff ha hitting you, you're not going to explode. And so uh, these are the first group of young men in 2004 that came to Ever Forward. Now, um, Here's where your part comes in. 
So a lot of you were given a card on the way in. You were given a card. And um, on this card um, is deeply connected to the work we do with taking off the mask. I mean, normally it's a workshop. It's an hour and a half. We do a deep dive in it. But we, we don't have that time today. But what we created was this card so that we as Ever Forward can think about how do we connect with people uh, and maybe even a quicker way, but also in a really meaningful way. So on the, the blank side of the card, this is called the 100,000 Mass Challenge. We're gonna be relaunching in the fall. Um, you'll be able to get more information about it, but I, I, I'm, I need your help right now, okay? Um, so on the left side, it says front of mask, on the left side. So what I would like you to do is um, draw a mask on this side, on the left side, where it says front of mask. So whatever you think a mask looks like, there's some markers going around, there's some at some of the tables. If you need one, raise your hand. I have some of well, my young men over here who can go around and get you a marker or a pen. If you need a pencil or something, Deshaun, will you grab these pencils and come over here? Um, so on the left side, I would like you to draw a mask. Like whatever you think a mask looks like, whatever size, whatever shape. On the front of the mask, I need you to write three words, somewhere on that left side, write three words which are characteristics and qualities that you gladly let people see about you. Like that you gladly let the world see about you, who you are, qualities or characteristics on the left side. Now the, the other side is, is different. Some of you already read the cards, so you already know, some of you are already like saying what you're not gonna do right now. Like, but this is the hardest, but this is the hard part sometimes. On the back of the mask, I need you to think of three things that you normally don't talk about. Like, and there may be a range of things. You could think of a range. There may be like three things that you've survived. It could be three things, like you may not talk about certain things because no one ever talks to you about it. Like it never comes up in conversation, so I don't talk about it. That could be one side of why you don't talk about certain things. This next part is where it gets a little bit uh, tricky and it gets exciting. So I need you, if you're comfortable, I need you to stand, put your pen down, pick your card up. And what I need you to do is like, like it's gonna, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be strange, but you're going to do it. So you, you get one minute to like buzz around the space where you're at. And every time you pass somebody, you're going to pass off a card. Keep it face down like this. You're going to pass it off. Just every time you pass somebody, you hand it to them. You got one minute, and then you're gonna, and I'm gonna count down from 10. That means you gotta be, get back to your seat. You got it? It makes sense? You're gonna stand up, card face down, you're gonna start walking around, you're gonna pass it, keep passing it, keep passing it for one minute, and then when I say, count down from 10, you're gonna make your way back to your seat. Just keep passing it, keep passing it, keep going, keep passing it, keep passing it, keep going, keep passing it, keep passing it. Keep, you, can, you, can, you can smile too, but keep passing it, keep passing it. Keep passing it, keep passing it. You all are awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all made me tired doing that. Like, I, I, I appreciate that. Can we just all take a deep breath? Okay, all right, so uh, this is where it gets a little bit uh, tricky, right? Okay, so in your hand right now, you have a gift from someone. Don't look at it yet. You probably already looked at it, but don't look at it. <laughs> Sorry. I should have said that first. That's, that's my job. My bad. Um, um, and what I want you to know that what, the fact that you have a card in your hand meant that somebody um, just at least showed up to participate. Like they, they, it may be blank, but they showed up and they participated at least with the activity. And one of my mentors said 98% of success is just showing up. Like you may have read a book that said 82 or 47 percent, but <laughs> if you don't, if you don't show up, the success is going to be difficult. So thank you for showing up on a Friday morning. And so whatever is on the other side of the card is extra. The fact that you got a card passed to you, and no one's missing one, right? Every, no one took one and hid it away, right? So. Everyone has a card, which means that everyone participated. So thank you for showing up and participating. So this next part is going to go quick. So I, can I get five volunteers to stand up and read one word from the front of the mask? To just go ahead and stand, and I'll just stay when it stop. Just Okay, stop right there. Great. No, no. If you're, if you're already standing, stand. I'll just, I'll just catch them. <laughs> it was just a smile. Here we go. So I'm going to just come around, and you read it as loud as you can. I may repeat it, but I'll do my best, okay? Vibrant. 
basically friendly, happy, outgoing, warm, silly, and creative, honest, passionate. Yeah, Oakland. Good job. Take a deep breath. My volunteers, can you sit down? Thank you. Thank you for volunteering. And those are the qualities that we show, that we love the people who see. And then there's other parts of us that we oftentimes don't get a chance. So can I have five volunteers stand and read a word from the back? Okay, stop there. If you're already standing, you can go ahead and stand. That's fine. Yeah, I was just trying to catch it before. <laughs> um, so we'll start at the top this time, and then we'll come down. So um, you're reading a word from the back. My father, thank you. Hard family stuff. I'm not enough. Ashamed. Puberty. Disappointed with myself. Sexual assault. Alone. Abandonment. Vulnerability. Isolation. Rage. Take a deep breath. And so I'm hoping that you're catching on to survival in another realm. Like our ability to walk around and be what we need to be on the front all day long, all day long. Hopefully there's a place that we can go and, and somehow deal with some of the other stuff that needs to be talked about, just cared about, needs to be nurtured. Here's what we find. When we work with adults, when adults uh, on their mass say happy on the front, this is a, just this is a low-level data what we've collected so far. So we have a lot of work still to do, but uh, I gotta go quicker. So happy on the front. Over seven out of 10 of them say actually on the back, they're feeling sad, afraid, and stressed. That's adults. We had a lot of practice with our masks. When they say they're happy on the front, the top three words we find on the back are sad, afraid, and stressed. I'll show you about teenagers. When teenagers say on the front of their mask that they're happy, if they use the word happy, on the back, over nine out of 10 of them say they're sad, afraid, or stressed. Younger us, our younger selves, our future generations know that they got to keep that stuff hidden away. And we know, we've seen it. If we don't help our young people deal with it in healthy ways, it is already happening. It comes out in unhealthy ways. So take another breath. Okay. So as to close out the survival, you know, um, I, I'm not sure w like what pushed you to get here today, and I'm so glad you did. I'm not sure like what in your life right now you're surviving. I'm not sure who in your life right now is going through their own moment of survival. But if you know about it, I'm hoping you just give them a call and say, hey, how you doing? I'm hoping that you just let them know you're there for them, even though you don't want to impede in their business. Let them know that you're there. Like, don't think that by telling them that you're there, that it's going to make them feel nervous about something. Let them know you're there. Even if you think they already know. I didn't know that young man was coming to my office that day. And so he went away for a couple of weeks. He came back. And at the end of the school, he had a free pass to my office. He had an unlimited free pass to my office anytime he needed to come see me. And in uh, the end of the school year, like the week before school was out, I got a note. He's, I got a call on the radio. He's in the office. I run to the office. He's not there. 
I'm like, what's going on? I'm like frantic. I'm like, my mind's going to all these places. So I go chasing around the campus looking for him. I finally find him on the football field. He start, he sees me. I look at him. He starts running. I chase him. Now, if, if you've ever been in a middle school, a vice principal chasing a student is probably <laughs> creates some excitement. <laughs> so uh, it was an exciting moment, and he's faster than me. But I got his jacket, and he peeled out of his jacket. And I said, well, if you want your jacket back, you're going to come to my office. And so he came to my office, and he handed me a note. I said, okay, sit down. He said, no, it's okay. I said, no, what do you mean? He's like, it's okay. So I said, okay, go to your class, and I'll come find you if I need to find you. And this was the note. Thank you, ladder, to Mr. Branch. Dear Mr. Branch, I want to thank you for being there for me. If it wasn't for you, I probably wouldn't be here right now. I hope to see you next year because I'm going to need somebody <laughs> to share my feelings with. And you is one of those people that I can talk to. And I want to thank that for you. I want to thank that for you. So I don't know like, where you find yourself in your life and the work that you do every day. Um, I'm hoping that it brings you a reward, even if in the challenge of it. I'm hoping that if in the things that you're currently surviving and the currently pushing through, that you are finding ways to keep yourself supported. I want to thank that for you. I want to thank you for showing up today when you had the option not to. Thank you for participating when you had the option not to. And if you know people, young people, older people in your life right now who, are, who need somebody to talk to, I hope that maybe you can be an ear. Not to fix them. I'm not here to fix anybody. Our young men know I'm going to ask you a thousand questions not to fix you, just to learn and just to know. And you tell me how you want me to help. That's our work in the Ever Forward Club. And so the next chapter, the cards you have just participated in, that's our new campaign, the 100,000 Mass Challenge. Um, if you want to get involved, um, we have our, some of our young people over here and our, our team over here. You can sign up to just hear about what's coming in the fall. We're going to be relaunching all around the world. Uh, these cards are going to go all over the world. We're going to have people filling out these cards. Uh, we're going to collect this data. We're going to figure out how do we support our young people, our older people, our everyone. Um, but we know that our pr primary focus is supporting our young men in our schools who are struggling. Um, Thank you for being here. You can get in touch with us in all the ways that you can find us. Um, I answer the phone, so you'll hear my voice if you call. So it won't be a, um, so um, thank you. Uh, thank you for all you've done today. Have a great Friday. Thank you for showing up Creative Mornings. Thank you.